And now the homily will be given by Archbishop Richard Smith, Archbishop of Edmonton, Alberta, and Canada, and President of the Canadian Conference of Catholic Bishops. En ces jours merveilleux, ici à Rome, nous sommes les témoins bénis, privilégiés, d'un événement extraordinaire qui réjouit profondément la population canadienne et américaine, et en particulier nos sœurs et nos frères des Premières Nations. Fille des peuples Mohawk et Algonquin, Kateri Tekakwita a été canonisée, élevée à la gloire des hôtels par le pape Benoît XVI, et cet honneur rejaillit sur tous les peuples autochtones. Comme mentionné le bienheureux Jean-Paul II dans son discours aux Autochtones d'Amérique, peu de temps après la béatification de Catherine, elle se dresse devant nous comme le symbole de la meilleure part de l'héritage qui est le vôtre en tant qu'Indien d'Amérique du Nord. Et puisque son nom a été ajouté au canon des saints de l'Église universelle, C'est maintenant devant toute l'Église, devant le monde entier, qu'elle se dresse pour rappeler le caractère universel de l'appel à la sainteté et proposer un modèle de coopération au mystère de la grâce. In our first reading this morning, the author of the Book of Wisdom poses this question. For who knows God's counsel, or who can conceive what the Lord intends? And he then proceeds to answer that question, saying that although God's mysterious counsels do indeed lie beyond the limits of human reason, nevertheless, they are made knowable to us by the working of God's Holy Spirit. God wants us to know his ways, indeed to know him, and he has acted to enable us to know him so that we might respond in love and cooperate with his saving plan for us. This revelation of the wondrous truth of God has been given in his Son, Jesus Christ, who has sent that promised Holy Spirit to enlighten our minds and hearts with divine wisdom and grace us with the ability to respond in faith and in love. The meeting of God's loving initiative with a grace-filled human response, is on beautiful display in the life of St. Cattery. The earliest intimations of the working of God's grace in her life were given in the name assigned to her by her family, Tekakwitha. This name, which we know was derived from her diminished capacity for sight, is patient of a variety of interpretations, such as she who feels her way ahead, moving forward slowly, one who bumps into things, but also one who places things in order or to put all into place. This diversity of meanings has to do in one way or another with seeing what lies before us. Now, it's of course true that Cattery's physical sight was seriously compromised due to the smallpox from which she suffered. What is equally true, however, and what is of far greater significance, is that her inner vision was clear. Deep within her heart, she had received the gift of seeing clearly the truth of Christ and of his church. It is as if God, working through the very name Tekakwitha and the life of the one who bore it, has drawn attention to the limits of human vision in order to point us to the true sight that comes from faith. In this year of faith, the life of Kateri demonstrates that the gift of faith carries with it the capacity to see, to see clearly, the beauty of God and his plan for us, which far exceed in grandeur the sensible realities of this earth. And here we can appreciate how our sister Kateri 
serves as an instructive witness for the new evangelization. These days, bishops from around the world are gathered in synod to reflect upon the call of both John Paul II and Benedict XVI to find new ways to announce the gospel joyfully and intelligibly to the peoples of our day. Cattery reminds us that this new evangelization, if it is to be effective, must not only be proposed anew, but also find an open and ready welcome in the heart of the recipient. When the Jesuit missionary, Father de Lambeville, spoke of our Lord and the Christian faith, the gospel message of life and hope found a home within Cattery. No words of hers are recorded that articulate her experience, but words are not necessary. We know that our response of faith to the call of the gospel is itself the work of grace. Thus is the witness of Cattery an invitation to all of us who will hear the beauty of the gospel proclaimed afresh to ask for the grace that we need to receive it with joy and respond to its call to life and hope. Only with the help of God's grace are we able, like Cattery, to make of our entire lives a living and pleasing sacrifice to God, as St. Paul exhorts us to do. Only with divine assistance do we become, like Cattery, the mothers, brothers, and sisters of Christ by doing the will of his and our Heavenly Father. Cattery nous enseigne encore, d'une façon qui n'appartient qu'à elle, que la réponse que nous donnons à Jésus dans la foi est source de guérison. L'un des aspects les plus frappants de son témoignage est la transformation miraculeuse de son visage peu après sa mort. Sa figure, gravement marquée par le petit vérole depuis l'âge de quatre ans, retrouva sa beauté originelle quelques minutes seulement après son décès. Ce phénomène fut précédé par les mots qu'elle prononça au moment de rendre l'âme. « Jésus, je vous aime. » L'amour du Christ pour nous et l'amour que nous lui offrons en retour opère en nous une guérison. De fait, nous avons bien besoin d'entendre aujourd'hui la leçon de Catherine. Nous ne portons peut-être pas de cicatrices physiques, mais bien des gens portent aujourd'hui des cicatrices affectives et psychologiques. Au lieu de la petite vérole, c'est la pauvreté, les dépendances, la solitude, les trahisons qui sont à l'origine de ces cicatrices. Elles montrent la souffrance qu'ont subi de nos jours des sœurs et des frères de Catherine dans les écoles résidentielles. Tant de douleurs, tant de cicatrices morales. Mais Catherine nous enseigne qu'aucune blessure, si profonde soit-elle, ne saurait nous priver de l'espérance. Rappelons-nous ces paroles. Jésus, je vous aime. Ces quelques mots résument toute sa vie. Jésus, je vous aime. La fraîcheur du visage de Catherine est le signe extérieur de la transformation intérieure accordé à tous ceux et celles qui donnent leur vie au Christ et qui le font par amour. And this healing opens the way to reconciliation. Many have posed the question as to how Cattery can aid the efforts of the representatives of the Church and of our First Nations to overcome any remaining separation. Well, I believe Cattery herself would point us to her love for Jesus Christ. Jesus, I love you. Just as her expression of love was soon followed by a healing of external scars, so too is our loving relationship with Christ the balm that covers and cures our interior wounds. Before we can be reconciled with one another, we must first be reconciled to the truth the truth that we all need the healing that Christ alone can give. Then 
we are set free to turn toward the other, both to extend and to receive forgiveness, and thus truly to be reconciled. Yes, we are indeed privileged to witness this event of Kateri's canonization. We shall also be truly blessed if we learn from her example. So let us now pray to our sister, our new saint, for this grace. Dear Saint Catherine, please pray for us. Prie pour ton peuple, tes sœurs et frères des Premières Nations du Canada et des États-Unis. Prie pour tout le peuple de nos pays. Prie pour l'Église. By your intercession, may we receive with joy the word of our Lord and be faithful at all times to the will of our Heavenly Father. Help us with your prayers to make of our lives a spiritual sacrifice to God, just as you did. May we so live in love with Jesus that we will know within ourselves the healing, the hope, and the joy that only he can bestow. Amen.